battled Deontay Wilder over three grueling fights, Tyson Fury captured the attention of millions of fans all across the globe. The loud, trash-talking Brit with an impeccable sense of humor and an outward appearance that resembled an HVAC technician much more than a professional fighter was television gold. And the story of redemption after nearly losing his life to drugs and alcohol that he brought into the ring with him was extremely endearing. But there is one thing that has been kept relatively quiet in the media. The wild, unhinged, and often gruesome history of his family. And in this video, we are going to fix that. My name is Greg and welcome back to GK. Today, we'll be talking about some of the lesser known facts about the Fury family. Things like street fights, prison terms, and even an organized crime ring. So grab yourself a nice little snack, get yourself a drink, set aside 10 to 15 minutes of your time, get comfortable, and uh, get your listening hat on because this is gonna get pretty interesting. And if you're new here, Welcome friend, on this channel we mostly discuss mixed martial arts, boxing, and true crime, and for the most part combine the three into hopefully interesting and easily digestible videos. So if that's your bag, consider subscribing. And without further ado, let's look into it. Tyson Luke Fury was born on August 12th of 1988 in Manchester, England to parents Amber and John Fury. His father, who we'll be getting to in a second, was a professional boxer as well as a bare knuckle fighter and decided to name him Tyson as a tribute to Mike Tyson. The Furies are part of the Irish Travelers, a nomadic group of people operating under their own laws. For instance, it's not uncommon for traveler children to forego traditional schooling, instead opting for the philosophy of life being the best teacher. And that's what happened to Tyson. He dropped out of school at the tender age of 10 and soon after dedicated himself to boxing full time. By the way, even though he calls himself the Gypsy King, the travelers aren't actually related to the Romani people who are called gypsies as a slur. Tyson's nickname is a play on the title of King of the Gypsies, which was bestowed upon the best bare knuckle fighter in the traveling circles. And Tyson has two relatives that previously held that title, Bartley Gorman and Uriah Burton. Bartley in particular has been called the most dangerous unarmed man in the world. He's got a book and everything, and if you're curious about the type of fights a guy would have to be involved in to earn that moniker, well, let's use one of his opponents as an example, a guy named the Staffordshire Wolfman, because apparently he likes to bite during fights, and that's what he did to Bartley. He bit him on the face and wouldn't let go. And Bartley won the fight by biting him back and not letting go even harder, so, you know, he's done some things and some stuff to earn that nickname. I personally wouldn't recommend it. The point is, he was a savage of a man that would throw down with anyone, anywhere, and over anything. There was no monetary gain to being the king of the gypsies, this was old school. The reward was the pride of being known as the ultimate ass whooper. Now, some people might find that silly, but the Furies are very proud of their fighting heritage. And nobody loves their family history more than Tyson's father, John. When he was competing, much like Tyson, he called himself Gypsy John Fury as a way to honor his ancestors. And while he wasn't necessarily the best professional boxer, losing several times and getting absolutely flatlined by former WBO heavyweight champion Henry Ekinwande, he does claim to be an undefeated street fighter. And I know what you're thinking, he sounds like every drunk D-bag to ever exist. Yeah, I'm undefeated in the streets, bro. I train UFC. I'm hardcore. I mean, shit. Who hasn't heard that at a bar before, right? Half of us probably were that guy at one point or another, but with John Fury, you almost have to believe him. And here's why. See, for a four-year period between 2011 and 2015, the eldest Fury was nowhere to be found, and that is because he was locked up in jail for gouging a man's eye out. Yep, you heard that right. See, John used to have a friend named Othi Sykes, and for all intents and purposes, they were pretty good pals, even traveling together. So one day in 1999, while hanging out in Cyprus, they had some type of a disagreement over a bottle of beer, and ended up getting into a fight. Well, Fury never forgets, I suppose, because when John saw him 11 years later at a car show, he decided that they were going to finish what they started right then and there. And as they were getting down, Fury decided that he was going to permanently maim his former friend. Just listen to how Sykes describes the incident. 
He was pushing his hand in my face. It was his finger. It went in my eye in the corner and he wouldn't stop. He was like gouging and poking and twisting and poking. All of a sudden I heard this sound, a clicking like a popping noise and when he took his hand away I realized blood was in his hand, a lot of blood. And to add even more credibility to his version of the story, this is what Sykes claims Fury told him upon noticing him. I'm the best man here at the auction. I'm the best man in the country. Now, if that doesn't sound exactly like John Fury, I mean... And I believe I'm the best 54-year-old man in the world. I'm the fittest, I know that. And I'm the best 54-year-old man on the planet. And I'm gonna prove it anytime, any place, anywhere, for free or for money. So let him take that in his pipe and smoke it. And I mean that, mate. Keep my son's name out of your mouth. If it's not good, don't talk about him. Sykes ended up losing his eye and Fury was sentenced to prison for 11 years, but ended up getting released in four. He describes his stint as the hardest thing he's ever done, in part because it jeopardized Tyson's boxing career. Luckily, he had a brother that knew a thing or two about boxing who had no problem stepping in as Tyson's head trainer. Enter Peter Fury. As a trainer, Peter was good. Some would even say great. He's often credited as being the mastermind behind Tyson's victory over long reigning heavyweight kingpin Vladimir Klitschko. In fact, Tyson was once quoted as saying, if it wasn't for Peter, I wouldn't be in boxing. I wouldn't train with anyone else. So yeah, great, super duper awesome trainer. And also a drug kingpin. Allegedly, he's been a major figure in Manchester's underworld for decades. In 1995, he was jailed for 10 years for possession with intent to supply, and according to multiple accounts, continued to run his business from behind bars, importing amphetamine from Belgium and distributing it around England. He once purchased the Porsche 911 cash for £63,000 while living in a caravan and operated under 12 different names and accounts in America, Jersey, the Isle of Man, Spain, Belgium, and Ireland. In 2008, he was once again arrested and sentenced to two years in prison for drug-related money laundering. These days, Peter resides in the French Riviera and insists that he has gone straight, crediting training Tyson and his son Hughie Fury for his change of lifestyle. Now, is he actually out of the game for good? I'd say most likely. Just like John Fury, he admitted that he struggled in prison and would never want to go back. Also had to pay back a bunch of money, over a million pounds I believe, and he's like the only older Fury with a full head of hair, so I rust my case. Compared to his uncle and dad, Tyson Fury seems to be a pretty normal guy. If you discount the whole cocaine and alcohol phase, of course. He's been involved in a controversy or two, mainly threatening to break journalist Oliver Holt's jaw, but for the most part, he's been very classy and he's been a big proponent of mental health, which is big. So all the best to him and his personal and professional life. And to you guys, I'm filming this the day before Christmas Eve. Happy holidays. Thank you for everything to everyone that's been watching. And I'll see you guys very soon, possibly in the new year, but I'm not sure if I'll put out a video right before. That's possible as well. So. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, enjoy your holidays.